All right, well, I guess I'm making a horror movie because my freaking camera is darker than hell and I got like three lights on, so. Anyways. So, I bought Metroid Dread. I really got to get a better camera. Anyways, I got Metroid Dread a few days ago. And so, I'll just say spoilers right now. I'm not going to have any clips in the video because I suck at technology and yada, yada, yada. Well... It's supposed to be a continuation of Metroid Fusion, which I had for the Game Boy Advance SP as a kid. And for the most part, it's, it's a pretty decent game. I'll say that. Um, I'm, I've never really been all that big on the Metroidvania-style games. I uh, played Hollow Knight before, which is pretty fun. A little bit more difficult for my liking, but it was it was a fun game. But this one, I, I mean, it, it has its moments. It has some pretty good moments. So... I'm going to start off with a complaint. The goddamn Emmys. Ugh. I hate them. They were, they were by far the worst part of the game. Um, you, you, I, you know, I mean, you're going through the area. You're having so much fun. You know, the exploration's good. You know, the combat's pretty good. I do, I do kind of like the, the you know, introduction of a parry mechanic. I kind of like that one. But the Emmys were just... Uh, they were terrible. They, they, they bring the whole game down to a snail's pace. They do. And, it, it, and that ruins it for me because it's just like... They, they wanted it to be this, this gameplay mechanic to where... You, you know, you're supposed to feel dread. You know, that's what a lot of this stuff said. You're supposed to be, feel afraid, like you're powerless... Like, you can't, you know, you're an ant trying to take on the Hulk, basically. Which, to a degree, I didn't feel any of that. You know, uh, the Emmys weren't really scary. You know, it, it, it was tense at the beginning because you're trying not to get caught. And, you know, the sudden death kills were always a pain to kind of deal with. But for the most part, I mean... It, I, they were annoying. They, it really made everything in the game come down to a snail's pace. It, it it was the worst part of the game, and even when you finally managed to kill them, it wasn't to a point where I'd really feel happy about it, or, you know, like, relieved. I was just felt as, like, I can't really say how I felt about it, because it's just, like, they got annoying. But the game itself, it was fun. Like I, like I said, I played Fusion when I was a kid. And this does a pretty good uh, pretty good continuation of that game. There's a few few plot holes, I would think, in the game. But for the, for the most part, it was just, it was pretty good. The bosses were alright. There's only in, uh, <laughs> about one of them that I really recall, uh, Trade. But... It had some good stuff into it. You know, it, it's your usual Metroid game. You know, you're running through the areas. You're getting your abilities back. But I feel like every Metroid game starts off the same. Samus lands on a planet. Samus loses her powers. And for some reason, all of her abilities are in that particular planet. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's always the same thing, too. But the gameplay itself, it felt fairly smooth wasn't really any big difference between this and fusion in terms of like abilities there's like one or two new abilities in the game like you actually get to use fully that i would say was different you know you had your spider magnet uh, i don't really recall ever really using that in fusion uh there's the cross bomb which was also uh it's been been quite a few years so maybe i'm wrong on this but you know the spider magnet the cross bomb and uh, maybe like one or two others, but if I had to rate the game, I'd probably say a 5 out of 10. I'd definitely probably have to say 5 out of 10. It's alright, the areas aren't entirely too memorable. The musics, to be fully honest, I didn't even really notice there was music half the time, except for in the Emmy areas, and I hated that. Worst part of the game. Exploration was pretty good. I mean, it's the same thing where you get to go to one area. Uh, there's spots you can't get to because you don't have the ability or the weapon for it yet. Then you come back later on. Which is, you know, your, your standard kind of Metroid stuff. Which, is, which isn't which is that big of a deal. 
But uh, the biggest problems with the game were the Emmys. You know, and uh, the, the biggest difference, I would say, I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about the Emmys and how they, you know, how they're, how they're better than the SAX from Fusion. I don't, I don't see that as being a viable opinion, I guess. I mean, I grew up playing that, and yeah, the SAX only showed up in a few scripted moments, but I feel like that's what was really terrifying about the game. You didn't know she was there. She just kind of pops up out of nowhere in a pretty damn cool entrance, I gotta say. And it was just it, the music that added on to it, the tension of, ha of, of trying to hide from a creature that has every one of your abilities while you have none at the moment. I think that was cool. And it also, it gave you the ability to kind of try to run and evade. But it wasn't an instant kill. Because between the, the, the Emmys, that instant kill is kind of what just... It, it, it beat the point for me. Like, it, it really felt like it was very easy to get caught. And then trying to run away... Uh, <laughs> I'm, never really, I'm never good at running away from uh, being chased in video games. I've never been good at that. But... The instant kill from the Emmy is just what really frustrated. I, I can remember going through the one area and that purple enemy uh, Emmy had to have killed me at least 50 times. At least 50 times. Because I didn't know you were supposed to run at the later half. And I've never been fond of games that either A, give you too much hand-holding, like, oh, you go here, go five steps, take a right. Or the games that don't tell you jack of what you're supposed to be doing or how to do it. I would say that a few of the, uh, the abilities in the games, it doesn't give you a full-on explanation of them. Like, the Shine Spark, uh, I've seen many video uh, YouTube tutorials by different YouTubers showing you how to, you know, that you can store multiple Shine Sparks or, like, do, like, a, like a combo of sorts with it. But it doesn't ever say that in the game. And that, that's really the worst part. And the ending, for me, it was just very anticlimactic. It's your standard stuff. You you know you you kill the boss, then you got to run away because the whole planet's about to blow the hell up, and that that's what that's what and, and and the ending didn't really give you any resolution to the plot personally. Like apparently, many people have noticed that beyond just losing all your abilities and the planet blowing up, there usually tends to be a a kind of like a uh, I forget what the word is, but you know they they, they leave you on a cliffhanger. And to me, that was that that kind of just ruined it. The final boss wasn't really anything in particular. He was just he was there. He had sam several of Samus's abilities because he's a Chozo. But it, it to me it was it was just it was anticlimactic for, to the point to where it was just you go through that whole gameplay experience and you get to that point and you're just like, is, is that it? Seriously. Like some stuff happens in the end, but there's no there's no resolution to it. It just it, it, like it throws you in there and then it bolts the hell out. And and to me that's just that's one of the worst things in a game to where it an event occurs, but it gives you zero explanation as to any of it. It just here's a and it's gone. That's it. Like okay, okay, there's a, but where the hell's B? You know, for furthermore, where the hell's C? There's no explanation to any of it. And that's the worst part about it. The gameplay, when you're not dealing with the Emmys, is pretty good. The exploration is enjoyable, being able to find hidden items, the several new abilities that you can use in order to further exploration and be able to get past enemies. It's good. But my biggest gripe with the game beyond the ending is the Emmys, because it always brings you to a snail's pace. It... You're going 100 miles per hour, and then you just slam straight into a brick wall. And that's the worst part about the game. With the SAX, there's only a few scripted points in the game until you finally beat them towards the end. But that was the best part about it. It was very little. In a horror movie, you don't want to see the monster every five seconds, because then it breaks the immersion. It's just like, well, how the hell do these people not see the, the monster? He's right there. I've seen him, like, freaking hour... A screen time it's not that hard to see but in this one you just go there's a damn near an enemy and uh, emmy in every area 
And to me, I just like, well, I dreaded going in there because I didn't want to deal with any of that. They, they were terrible. It was not fun. It wasn't enjoyable. It just broke the fun of the game. To me, it felt like if the Emmys weren't in the game or if they weren't as uh, easily able to find you or whatever, it would have made the game a lot more enjoyable. But for me, just not being able to avoid them being going from having so much fun exploring to just oh god damn it not one of not these guys again like that that was just the worst part for me and really that's just it i mean i gotta say it's just more like a five out of ten for me i was pretty hyped up to play it but once i started and once i started playing it was pretty fun but one but once it beats you in the head oh we got these these indestructible robots down here you know and you can't kill them even if you're at full power, you couldn't kill them. And I think they really dug themselves in the hole with that one, because then they had to bring up some other garbage as to how you actually kill them. But, like I said, with the SAX, you didn't even know it was there. But when it showed up, it kind of told you, like, this thing has all your abilities, you don't have the ability, you know, you can't fight it right now, you'll surely die. Versus, yep, you can't kill them. Not even if you were at full power, you couldn't kill them. Best run, your best run, and that's what ruined it for me. If they were a surprise thing, if they weren't so varied and so uh, numerous, it would be a lot easier to deal with. But with just with how they had it, and with how many they were, and just how the game ended, it was a whole lot of work for nothing, and it just wasn't a very satisfactory ending. And that's really all I could say for it. Exploration was good. The combat was pretty good. But my two biggest gripes are the Emmys and the ending. That's really all I got to say about it. Hopefully, if they make another Metroid game, it'll pick off in some of the plots that it's you know it ended with. It'll give you a bit more info. Because waiting a few you know a few years for Dread after Fusion, more than a few years, but waiting for that and just really, really, really having more questions than answers, kind of ruins it. I mean you. Destroyed all the X parasites, but now there's more X parasites, and you're it's it's just a whole lot of questions, but not really giving you answers. And I really think that's the biggest issue with the game. Well, that's all the info I got for y'all today. Hopefully, next time when they make another game, it'll be a lot more fun. It'll be a lot more enjoyable, and I won't get so damn frustrated with the freaking enemies. Ah, all right, anyways, thank y'all. See y'all next time. Bye bye.